Okay, this is a uh, <coughs> summary of <coughs> Sheikh Salman's address to the conference. Um, <coughs> after <coughs> after praising Allah uh, Azza wa Jal and asking Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to invoke His blessings upon His Prophet, the Sheikh recited the verse from Surah Al Hazab that Allah and His angels. Um, uh, that Allah praises His Prophet in front of His angels, and His angels ask Allah for mercy for the Prophet. O oh, you who believe, ask Allah to praise His Prophet before His angels. And then he, the Shaykh greeted uh, the attendees at this conference and the conference uh, um, uh, support uh, staff and said, uh, I would like in the beginning to uh, thank uh, these uh, brothers and sisters uh, and honor you. Uh, for fulfilling this obligation, for coming to this conference to discuss amongst one another the best means and the best ways and most effective uh, ways in order to support and defend uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We all know that defending the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam allows us to achieve the obligation which Allah has set upon us to show the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam our wala. Or our support, and indeed Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in the Quran has commanded us in more than one passage to support the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and to honor him and to follow the light which Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, sent him with. And for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is not like any other individual. Indeed, our love for him um, comes in our hearts due to the fact that he is the final Prophet, that he is the best of all humanity and that he is the leader of all the prophets. And so therefore he has a right upon us, uh, obligated upon us by Allah Azza wa Jal, that we must stand with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in all ways in order to support him. Uh, for uh, we know that this attack against the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's personal, uh, personality by these Christian fundamentalists who represents the right-wing uh, extremists in the United States is part of a general attack on the religion of Islam. And while perhaps the statement of a particular preacher in his accusation on public television that the Prophet ﷺ was a terrorist might have brought us here to this conference, indeed the matter is larger than that. And how odd is this attack of, on the Prophet ﷺ by accusing him as a terrorist. When if we look at his seerah, his life history, we know that he is further from this. For instance, there is a very famous incident during the life of the Prophet ﷺ when he was uh, resting uh, uh, under the shade of a tree and one of the pagans surprised the Prophet ﷺ and took, uh, had had a sword with him and said to the Prophet ﷺ, who will defend you now? The Prophet ﷺ, not having any weapon, said, Allah. And then the Prophet ﷺ pulled the sword out of the hand of the pagan and asked the pagan, who will defend you now? The pagan replied, no one can defend me. The Prophet ﷺ then presented Islam to the pagan, called the pagan to Islam. But this idol worshiper chose not to be a Muslim. But he said to the Prophet Sallallahu however though, I promise that I will neither fight you nor be in amongst people who will uh, wage war against you. So the Prophet Sallallahu accepted that from him and allowed him to go his way. Also we have the story of another idol worshiper who when captured in battle and was put uh, in the masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu as a prisoner of war and was tied to one of the pillars of the Prophet's uh, mosque, the Prophet وسلم, for three days would come to him every day and present Islam uh, to this pagan. And every time the idol worshiper would refuse uh, to accept the shahada. And so finally the third day it was agreed that he would leave. So he was let free. He was let free. He left Medina and then made ghusl and returned back and said his shahada before the Prophet sallallahu uh, He did this so he wanted to make sure that people knew that he didn't take his shahada out of duress or out of fear because he was a captive, 
but rather just to show them that he did it out of his own free volition. And how much more can we show that this attack of the, upon the Prophet ﷺ, that he is a terrorist, is false, than just looking at the incident when the Prophet ﷺ returned back to Mecca, purifying Mecca, the house established by the Prophet Ibrahim ﷺ for the worship of Allah, purifying it from the idols. And these Meccans who had humiliated the Prophet ﷺ and companions who had fought against the Prophet ﷺ, who evicted the Prophet ﷺ's companions first to uh, Ethiopia and then thereafter to Medina, who killed the Prophet ﷺ's companions when the Prophet ﷺ returned to Mecca victorious and had the city under his control, he asked them, how do you think I will treat you now? They replied, we only expect that you will treat us in the best manner, for indeed you are a noble brother and the son of a noble brother. So the Prophet ﷺ said, yes, I will only treat you in the best manner, indeed you have been set free. And so war we know is not always an evil. Indeed war many times needs to be justified in order to protect oneself from the attack of those who wish evil unto you. And no nation can live neither in the past nor in present except that it must at some times enter into war. However though, when we look at the difference between how the Prophet ﷺ engaged in war and how these people engage in war, we know that while everybody claims that their war is a just war, the historical facts prove that what the Prophet Sallallahu behavior during war and peace was that only of the most highest character, unlike the people who seem to attack the Prophet Sallallahu who are from nations which are known to uh, uh, shed much blood. Indeed, many Western historians and philosophers and thinkers and uh, people of the arts and letters, upon reading the life of the Prophet Sallallahu have acknowledged much of his character that should be acknowledged and have testified to much of the truth which is in his life. We might just t mention one example that when the author who wrote the book of the hundred most influential people in history, he was only compelled but compelled to rank the Prophet wasallam as the most influential per person. And this of course is not to be surprising, because if anybody reads anything of the Prophet ﷺ's nobility and his character and his personal behavior and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him from guidance and uh, from teachings, one can only come to the conclusion that he is the greatest of all of humanity and the most influential upon humanity in the best way. Indeed, many people, upon leave, reading the life of the Prophet Sallallahu even though they might not be Muslims, become to learn to love the Prophet Sallallahu For one unique characteristic of his life, uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is that there are no secrets in his life. There are no hidden matters of his life. Even his most personal affairs, those matters that dealt between him and his wives, this was something which is known in open, and there's nothing hidden or nothing to be ashamed of, or nothing to be uh, found that needs to be defended or needs to find an explanation for. Any one of us knows that his closest friend, or even maybe his closest, his, his own blood brother, you do not know anything about maybe what's going on in his personal life between him and his wife. But yet the Prophet Sallallahu life is open to us all in every single aspect so that it may remain a example for us to follow. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Qur'an, indeed you have in the Messenger of Allah a beautiful example uh, to follow. Uh, this attack upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is part of a general attack upon Islam that leaves no st t t a stone unturned. It, anything that deals with Islam is now under attack. And first and foremost, of course, is going to be the person of the Prophet uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. However, it is so odd that we Muslims, because we have been taught by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu that we must believe in all the Prophets, we must love all the Prophets, we must respect all the Prophets, if we were to hear of any word being said regarding the Prophet Musa alayhi salam, or the Prophet Isa, Jesus alayhi salam, any negative word or any insuation, we would take this as an attack upon our religion, because we have been taught to believe and to love and respect all the Prophets. And that is because the Prophet Muhammad came with a message which confirms to their message and which stands as a guard 
over those messages, abrogating which is to be abrogated, and correcting which was uh, that which was corrupted by the followers of these prophets thereafter. It is a summary and a perfection of all the previous messages. And it is to be eternal until the end of time. And so therefore it is an obligation upon each and every one of us that we must uh, choose to support the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If we cannot gather our Ummah upon supporting, upon this issue of supporting and defending the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then it means we cannot gather the Ummah upon any matter. For as we know, often there are, um, uh, because of um, differences in madhab or differences in party affiliation, Muslims place barriers between them and their fellow Muslims in achieving the aims that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established in the Sharia. But this is an issue to which we cannot differ upon because this is the foundation of our religion.